good morning we will see today context free grammar first we will see what is general grammar and then we will come to context free grammar so any general grammar is defined as g is equal to vtp s where g is the set of variables which are also called as non terminals t is the set of terminals or called as alphabets p is the set of production rules of the form alpha derives beta where alpha and beta are strings or b union t and at least one symbol of alpha belongs to v that means this alpha derives beta will identify what kind of grammar it is and this alpha should all at least contain at least one symbol from v and s yes is a uh, symbol from set v where it is called as a start variable example suppose g1 is equal to capital s a b this is a set of uh, variables and small a b are the set of alphabets here these are the notations which are used variables we represent using capital letters and uh, terminals or alphabets we represent using lower case alphabets and s yes, is a start variable which is one of the variable list identified as a start variable and this is a set of productions where s yes, derives we call it as s derives a b a derives a b derives b and uh, second grammar is given by s a where the variable is contain s, s and a and uh, terminals contain a b and s is a start variable and these are the production rules next coming to the derivation from a grammar strings may be derived from other strings using the productions in the grammar if a grammar has a production alpha derives beta we can say that x alpha y derives x beta y if alpha derives beta under the grammar g suppose we have g2 is equal to s a a b s and these are set of productions and uh, suppose we start with the production s derives uh, a capital a b and this a a we can replace it by a a a b so now this a a i'll be replacing by a a a b and this b as it is and now this again a a i will be replacing by a a b b and this b as it is so now if i substitute a is equal to epsilon i'll be getting a a a b b b that is a cube b cube now let us see what is sentential form and a sentence a sentential form is any string derivable from the start symbol so in your previous example a a b a a a capital a b b b so where it contains so uh, so symbols from b union t are all sentential forms as s yes, uh, sentential forms as s yes and a a a b are themselves so that means yes sim alone itself is a sentential form and only terminals is also a sentential form next is sentence a sentence is a sentential form consisting only of terminals such as only a a a b b b that means every sentence is a sentential form but not the vice versa because you are a capital a b is a sentential form but it is not a sentence since capital a is not a terminal a sentence can be derived using the following algorithm so first is derive string let us declare the string as a start variable then repeat choose any non terminal in the string so in this start variable choose any non terminal so then find a production with this non terminal on the lhs replace the non terminal with one of the options on the rhs of the production so do this until string contains only the terminals this is a procedure which can be used to derive some strings from the given grammar now coming to the definition of a language a set of all strings that can be derived from a grammar is said to be the language generated from that grammar so a language generated by grammar g is a subset formally defined by l of g is equal to w such that w belongs to t star that means w contains only the symbols from terminal such that 
yes derives w that means from the start symbol i have to generate this string w if l of g1 equals to l of g2 then the grammar g1 is equivalent to the grammar g2 if both generate the same set of strings example if there is a grammar g with uh, b is equal to s a b t is equal to a b and p is equal to s a b a derives a b derives b here s yes, produces a b and we can replace a by a and b by b here the only accepted string is a b you can just generate only a b so therefore l of g is equal to a b now the same i can write it as s yes, derives a b now suppose we have the grammar with uh, b is equal to s a b t is equal to a b and p is equal to s a b and a derives a a or a b derives b b or b then the language generated by this grammar is so if i substitute s yes, derives uh, capital a b then a derives a and b derives b i will be getting a b so suppose i replace this uh, a by a a then i will be getting a a b and this a if i replace by uh, a then i will be getting a square and this uh, b i will be replacing by b i will be getting a square b so likewise the language accepted so this i can show it like this suppose i start with s yes, derives a b and this a if i start using the production a a and b this b as it is and now for this a if i replace a a i'll be getting this now if i replace this b by small b i'll be getting a a b so that is nothing but a square b if i use a uh, a production first only with a and then b for first with uh, b b and then second b with b then i'll be getting a b square or both the time two times if i use uh, a a and b b then i'll be getting a square b square likewise i can get this uh, sentences which belongs to the l of g so it is of the form a power m b power n where m is greater than or equal to 1 so you can observe there is at least one a and at least one b and uh, n greater than or equal to 1 so both m and n should be at least 1 next is chomsky hierarchy so according to naum chomsky there are four types of grammars that is type 0 type 1 type 2 and type 3 so this table shows how they differ from each other so type 0 is called as a unrestricted grammar and it is uh, accepted by recursively enumerable language and the automata for uh, mm, this type 0 is the turing machine next type 1 is context sensitive grammar it is accepted by context uh, sensitive grammar and the language is context sensitive language and the automata for recognizing type 1 now uh, language is linear bounded automata and type 2 is your context free grammar and it is uh, the language is called context free language and it is uh, accepted by the push down automata type 3 is your regular language regular grammar and regular language and it is accepted by finite state automata which is your dfa nfa or epsilon nfa now coming to the context free grammar we have seen the general grammar so far which has a vtps now v is a set of variables T is a set of terminals, P is a set of productions. So, here as I told, so the productions previously in the general we have written alpha derives beta. Here you can observe the productions will be of the form A derives beta. So, which indicates the left hand side should have a single variable and on the RHS you can have uh, strings from B union T star. That is the left hand side of the production rule P does have any right context or left context so and s is a start variable so these languages generated by this grammar are said to be are to be are recognized by a non-deterministic pushdown automata so the recognizer for the cfg 
these are pushed down automaton suppose example s derives x a x derives b x x derives a b c x derives epsilon you just have to observe that on the lhs you have a single variable to say that it is a context free language now let us see how to write the context free grammar for various languages so first one all strings of a is and b is so it means uh, it has to contain all the strings which are possible from a's and b's so your s will be deriving a s so you can apply s any number of times to generate so if your language should accept empty string then put an empty string that is epsilon here if it should not accept empty string remove this so your uh, productions will be s derives a s or a or b s or b so all kinds of strings of a's and b's including the epsilon means include this otherwise with at least one symbol means uh, remove this epsilon so that will be the set of production so you should write the uh, other parameters that is v t p s uh, with the production rules in containing this next strings uh, starting with a here in this case i can start with a or start with b in the previous case but now the condition is that it has to start with a so s derives a a or a and where a derives a a or b a or epsilon so why i have separated here as a s a as well as a another a production because my uh, string should start with a so it has to contain uh, the symbols from it has to start with small a and for the generating of the remaining symbols i use the a production so a production can contain a or b is uh, in any form with including epsilon so i can have s derives a a and a derives a a or b a or epsilon and this one where you can write here or you can include this both will be doing the same task next is strings ending with b so it means i have some variable to generate the remaining symbols and it has to end with b or it could be a simple b so for a i have to use the same production that is to generate all symbols of a's and b's including epsilon next is strings starting with a and ending with b so you can write you can observe here it is s derives a a that is it has to start with a and this a it should end with b that means at least there should be b and for the intermediate a's it has it has uh, two options either it can generate a is using a a or it can generate b is using b a so these are the productions for the l3 language next uh, strings containing a so means this containing a means this a could be either at the end or be, be, uh, be, before or in the between anywhere so for generating the other a b symbols from a is and b is i use a a here and this a i have at least one a should be there so for this a anything i can generate using these production other other any uh, strings of a's and b's i can generate using this production next is uh, any number of a's followed by any number of b's means here you can observe it is followed previously it can contain anywhere anywhere anything uh, but only condition is that it should have at least one a but here it is not of that kind it is first you any number of a's can come followed by any number of b's so for generating any number of a's i use a production and for generating any number of b's i use b production so now here s derives a b a derives a a because i have to generate only a a or it could be epsilon also and for generating b i use b production so b derives b b or epsilon so we'll stop for uh, here and continue the uh, remaining examples in the next video thank you